Hello. Uh, oh, the lighting's a little weird today. It's, uh, it's darker than usual because there's a storm happening right now. It's, it's actually a very nice, uh, nice time to practice uh, with the storm happening. So, um, <laughs> as I've mentioned on previous uh, streams, that this is going to be a 60-minute class. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've modified the schedule so that Monday is a 90-ish minute class. Uh, Tuesday is a 75-minute-ish class, and then I'm trying to keep this one uh, to the 60-minute format. So uh, what I do is I just uh, write out a sequence uh, based on the class on Monday, and then kind of cross off some things to make it shorter and then come through on Wednesday and cross off some more things. So it's kind of, you could say this is the streamlined version of the week's class. Um, so hello viewer, uh, whoever you may be, I'm glad you are here with me. Um, if you want to, if you're on the chat uh, program, I don't know how you get on there, but if you're on there uh, and you want to tell me who you are, uh, let me know and I'll, you know, give you some uh, personal encouragement. <laughs> if not, no problem. Uh, and I, I, I understand the appeal of anonym, anonymity as well. Uh, so, without further ado, we only have 60 minutes, so we better get started. Oh, I just wanted to show my, um, my cool Bob Dylan um, integrity shirt. It's a very 90s tank top. I've been thinking about uh, changing my outfit every time I do a stream, which so I'm getting to the, getting to the back of the, uh, back of the drawer here. Okay, so um, I have a theme for today. <laughs> My theme for the week is uh, playing the game, and uh, this idea came from playing um, board games with my children, who are three and five, and uh, we have this game that I've, I kind of have mixed feelings about. It's a um, it's a game where you collect acorns and store the acorns for the winter. And you spin, you spin a thing and you can either get a colored acorn with your spin uh, or you can steal an acorn or you can lose all your acorns in one turn. Uh, so this game often uh, results in tears, as you might imagine. Um, but... <laughs> So I thought, okay, well, maybe these rules are too harsh, but I think there's a certain reality to the rules. Like, yeah, things can, you know, things can get stolen or lost or all, you can lose all your nuts. You can build up a store of something and then it's gone in a moment. And what do you do next? Uh, so for my kids, what I'm teaching them is that what you do next is not pick up the game board and fling it up into the air. That's just, that's just not what we do. Um, <laughs> so thinking about uh, our yoga practices and how, um, you know, we were, I find that I'm just relearning things that I'm teaching my children. Um, so, you know, when we come up against something frustrating or something doesn't feel fair or we're not doing some it, our bodies aren't doing the, something in the way that we hope that they would or that we expect them to um, just how do we keep how do we continue on without clashing up with that frustration without throwing the game board up into the air and um, yeah, so I, like everything, I've come to realize in my life and, in, and through my yoga practice, it's a, it's a balancing act, it's a paradox, it's two things at once. So I feel like it's helpful to be competitive, it's helpful to have goals. You know, it's, um, I feel like health, competition can be healthy when we're, you know, inspiring one another to do things that we didn't know we were capable of. Um, and you know, just give, like I said, gives you direction, gives you goals, gives you motivation. Um, but it also, it's a very, it's a slippery slope. You can get into uh, a very com 
competitive place where you're putting yourself down all the time or you're trying to tear somebody else down to bring yourself up. So um, yeah, that's just something I was thinking about. I'll stop, I'll stop rambling on about it because I'm, you know, we gotta do the yoga now. Uh, so we're gonna start in Virasana. Uh, this pose often requires props, uh, especially if it's the first pose we're doing in the practice. Bring your knees together, angle your shins apart, point your toes, and then grab the flesh of your calves, pull it back and apart as you take a seat between your heels. So I'm sitting up on a blanket to alleviate pain from my knees. Uh, it could be a blanket, it could be a block, you could be stacked up on a um, stack of books. Uh, but get comfortable, get supported here in your seat. Release down through your legs and hips as you close your eyes. Settle your palms down on your thighs. And arrive. Invite yourself into this room, onto your mat, and into your body for this next hour of practice. So if you have begun to establish a home practice, uh, hope, hopefully you have a space in your house where you can, uh, you can roll out your mat. Um, and uh, if you have done this uh, several times now, you might, have, you might feel that you've established this space for, for practice and that when you come to your seat, you already start to notice a change. There's a more automatic, arrival in your body and with your breath. So through the yoga practice, we are uh, creating patterns, rerouting the mind and body. Imagine roots growing from your legs and hips into the floor beneath you. Visualize those roots growing strongly, deeply, down through the floor, down, down, down until they reach the earth. Set an energetic connection between your body and the floor, your body and the earth. And then from that connection, grow tall. Lengthen along your spine as you shrug your shoulders up towards your ears, lifting into your armpits. And then keeping your armpits lifted Loop your shoulder blades together behind your heart so that there's a contraction of the upper back muscles as your collarbones broaden and your chest lifts. Tilt your chin down parallel to the floor. Ease the sides of your neck back and lift and lengthen along the back of your skull. Bring a fingertip or two to your upper abdomen. With the awareness of your fingertips there, create a tone by drawing your left and right front lower ribs into a central point and then easing that point subtly towards your spine to strengthen your core and lengthen your low back. Place your palm back to your thigh. Feel the weight of the arms sink towards the earth. Neutralize the expression of the face. There might be areas that you um, unconsciously hold tension in, in the expression of your face. It might be a furrow of the brow, a snarling of the lip, a clenching of the jaw. Notice and soften. Turn the gaze inward. and begin to breathe consciously in and out through your nostrils. Long, slow, deep breath. As you deepen the breath pattern, begin the practice of ujjayi pranayama by drawing in a gentle contraction at the back of your throat, essentially shrinking the area through which you draw air in and allow air to escape your body.
Prioritize the sound of your breath above all other noises around you. And let this sound act as the soundtrack to your breath meditation, to your arrival in the present moment. You may notice the mind wandering, focusing on other things, worrying, anticipating, all the things that the mind is used to doing. Take a moment, notice what those things are that you're thinking about. Accept those as valid thoughts, but place them aside for now. Give yourself permission to be present with your body and breath and in the present moment. This can be a very challenging aspect of home practice, is giving yourself the permission to do it because all these other things around you are constantly pressing in, distracting you. Invite yourself here. Continuously arrive. Perhaps you find a way to enjoy this moment. Enjoy the breath. invite you to follow your breath through three more cycles of ujjayi pranayama. Once you've completed those three rounds of Ujjayi Pranayama, flutter your eyes open and we'll move into a twist, Radha Jasna. It occurred to me that uh, one of my, two of my viewers to this evening might be um, Jeffrey and Scotty. So if you're out there, hello, I'm glad you're here. Uh, keep your knees together, swing your feet out to the left, nesting the left ankle and the arch of the right foot, sitting down on your right hip. Take your right hand behind your back to prop up your chest, not weight bearing. Inhale to grow tall and exhale, cross your left hand to the right thigh as you revolve from left to right. So I also always talk about not only moving from left to right in this shape, but moving from top to bottom, grounding through the legs and hips and starting to shift from the abdomen, from left to right, across the ribs, middle back, chest and upper back, and then eventually bringing the twist into the neck and head. Chin parallel to the floor as the gaze goes over the right shoulder, leading the gaze with the left eye. Infuse the pose with breath. Infuse the pose with awareness. So 
it's uh, one thing to do the shapes. It's, a, it's another part of the practice to notice what your body feels like when you're doing the shapes. So be present with the experience. What are you feeling? Where are you feeling? How are you feeling? How does the breath change those experiences? So the poses, although we stay somewhat uh, still here, the pose is moving. The pose is, what's the word, dynamic. Inhale, come back to center, a little counter twist before we do the second side. Knees together, swing your feet out to the right, nesting the right ankle in the arch of the left foot. Left hand behind, prop up the chest. Inhale, grow tall, and exhale, revolve. Right to left, bottom to top, inside to outside. So thinking not, not only about what the pose looks like, about the, align, the, uh, the alignment of the outer body, but thinking about how the pose is actually moving from the inside out. So you're moving your muscles, moving the bones, Hug the left shoulder blade onto the back of the chest. Shift the inner organs. Shift, uh, use the strength of the core to twist around the, um, the lower abdomen. And then eventually taking the gaze over the left shoulder, chin parallel to the floor, leading with the right eye. We'll be doing quite a few twists today, culminating in a revolved crow pose. So if you ate dinner right before class, uh, some of these things might be uncomfortable. It's, you know, it's advisable to wait a couple hours after eating a, a big meal before doing any yoga. Good rule of thumb. Inhale, come back to center. Counter twist, and we're going to come forward into our tabletop position. Plant your wrists below your shoulders, and let's go straight into some cat and cows. Inhale, belly and chest down, tailbone and gaze lift. And exhale, round the spine in cat pose. Push the floor away, lift into the belly button, tuck through the tailbone, dome the upper back. And then an inhale brings you back to cow. So use the breath to inform the, um, <laughs> inform the pace of your movement here. So move with the breath, coming to the peak expression of each posture at the very top of your inhale and at the very bottom of your exhale. Explore your spine. If you've done this sequence a hundred times before, a thousand times before, two thousand times before, four thousand times before, however many times you've done this, notice that today is different. Today is a culmination of every experience you've ever had. A culmination of every uh, experience, everything that's ever happened in the universe brought us to this place on our mats today. Don't miss it. Pay attention. Where are you feeling? What are you feeling? How do you start to move in such a way that your practice becomes an expression of your experience on the mat right now? My experience is I want to do some big ellipses with the hips. So join me if you'd like, sending the hips in one direction, out, back, front, and in the other direction. And now take the knees a little bit wider. We're going to thread the right arm between the knees, reaching for the left calf, ankle, or heel, landing the right shoulder, right side of the head on the mat for this version of twisted child's pose. Push your knees down, shift your hips to the right, and then look up under your left armpit. You can use your left hand pressing into the floor to move your left shoulder to the right. And then the analogy I like to use in this pose uh, for the breath is uh, breathe like you're uh, filling up a sponge. Um, what, do you, what would you call that? Saturating a sponge as you inhale. And then as you exhale, wring out the sponge. Pull the belly button in towards the spine. Push all that air, all that water out of your sponge. And then the more water you press out, the more water your sponge is going to absorb on the next inhale. So this is a cleansing posture. 
Again, be present with your experience. Let the poses bring you into your body. And if that, if the experience of the shape in your body is, uh, is unpleasant <laughs> uh, to the point of being uh, off-putting or uh, painful, then find a way to modify the shape. Inhale back to center. You know, before you tip over the, the game board, slide your left hand between your knees, reaching back for your right calf, ankle, or heel. Land the left shoulder, left side of the head on the mat. Push the knees down, shift the hips left. Push the right hand down, shift the right shoulder left. And then again, think about your breath like that sponge. Inhale, saturate the sponge, fill it up. Exhale, ring it out. Pull the belly button strongly towards the spine, cleansing the internal organs by promoting circulation. Okay, back to the tabletop shape. Bring your left knee an inch towards center as you extend your right leg straight up and back. Knee and toes point down, hips at an even height as you extend your left arm forward. Reach forward with the heart and fingertips, reach back with the tailbone, heels, and in the middle, keep that semblance of strength. Lower ribs drawing in and back. Strong core, long low back, point the right toes, bend the right knee, reach back with the left hand for the inside of the foot or ankle. If you can grab the foot or ankle, get a good grip and then begin to kick your foot into your hand, lifting your thigh away from the floor. If this isn't accessible, stick with the leg, back, arm forward. If you are here, let the left shoulder be drawn deeply onto the back of the chest. I call this crossbow pose. So if you know bow pose, that makes sense. Uh, you're just crossing the body to create this shoulder opener in the left, on the left side, this quad stretch on the right side. Release that, hand down, foot down. We'll do the second side. Bring your right knee an inch towards center as so you extend the left leg back, knee and toes point down. Reach the right arm forward, heart and fingertips reach forward. Again, create that stability, that awareness at your middle body. Point your left toes, bend your left knee, reach back with the right hand for the inside of the foot or ankle. If you can get a good grip there, begin to kick your foot into your hand, lifting the left thigh away from the floor and letting the right shoulder blade melt deeply onto the back of the chest. Another potential listener out there might be Andrea, um, who I know from Rubber Soul also, but who also uh, passed me this candle through my car window earlier this week. She works at Community and they have some very lovely candles. I got one named desert and what a treat it is to practice yoga with a nice scented candle so if you have one use it <laughs> release now from that position and then left hand below the face right hand to the base of your skull inhale open the chest towards the right wall as your elbow and gaze turn up exhale curl in shoulder blades apart elbow towards the left wrist Inhale, open right, look up, reach up. Exhale, curl in. One more, inhale, open. Exhale, curl in, and plant the right hand below the face. Left hand to the back of the skull. Inhale, open the chest to the left wall, look up, elbow up. Exhale, shoulders apart, elbow towards the wrist. Inhale, left. Exhale, curl in, and last, biggest breath in, open up, and exhale, curl in. Okay, we are now going to come to standing. Stand at the top of your mat in Tadasana, or mountain pose. Take your feet hip-width distance apart, lift and spread your toes before placing them back down. Establish connection between your feet and the floor. Root down to rise. Shoulders away from the ears. Collarbones broad. Palms turned forward. Embody your mountain. Feel that you are one with the earth. 
rising up out of it, growing it tall, growing it broad, strong. Reconnect with your breath and with your next inhale, arms sweep overhead as you reach up, palms touch, look up. Exhale, gently bend your knees as you flow forward, fingertips to the earth or to a block in front of you, release the head. Inhale, palms come to shins, shoulder blades on the back, chin and chest forward. Exhale and fold deeply in, release the head. Inhale, circle the arms out, up and overhead, push down through the feet, look up, reach up, exhale, hands come through heart center and arms to your side, shoulders roll back. Two more, sun salutation A, or half sun salutation A. Inhale, sweep up, look up. Exhale with grace, flow forward. Release the head. Inhale, palms to shin, shoulder blades on the back, chin and chest forward, flat back. Exhale and fold even deeper into yourself. Inhale, push down through the feet, rise to stand. Exhale, hands come down through heart center, roll the shoulders back, palms forward. One more time with your own breath. Okay, let's all meet back in Tadasana, and we're going to do the next few poses with the feet together. If feet together is not accessible for your body, if you have a block, you can slide a block at its lowest setting between your thighs. If you do not have a block and you cannot bring your feet together, don't sweat it. Do what you can do, don't do what you can't do. Uh, base of the big toes come to touch, lift and spread the toes, ground down through the feet, tone the muscles of the legs, arms at your sides, shoulders roll back, inhale, sweep the arms overhead, and we're gonna interlace the fingers, crossing the thumbs, pointing the index fingers skyward as we lift up out of the waistline, ground through the feet, tone the muscles of the legs, inhale, grow tall, and exhale, shift to the right, crescent pose. Inhale, grow tall, exhale, go left, keeping the hips and chest squared forward, inhale, center. Two more times, exhale right, inhale, center, exhale left, inhale, center, exhale right, inhale, center, exhale left, and inhale, come back to center. This is more of a crop top than I would have liked. This is probably why I don't wear this shirt. Okay, interlace your fingers behind your head. We're going to do our back bend now. Okay, so lengthen through the low spine, lift through the front of the pelvis, lower ribs in and back. So there's a stability of the lower body pushing down. And then from that ground, lifting into the back of the heart. Widen your elbows apart, hug your shoulder blades together behind the heart and then lift, lift the gaze up. So look towards the ceiling. So you have the support of your own hands behind your head. Now imagine a second support behind your heart. A hand gently lifting your heart skyward. So the space across your chest expands and lifts. And now slowly begin to curl back into that support. The head is supported in the hands, the neck is staying long, that second imaginary hand lifting the heart up. Ground through the feet, lift through the heart, take the gaze along the ceiling towards the back wall, soften the edges of your mouth, and then inhale, bring the chest forward, arms forward, head comes up last. Inhale, sweep the arms up, palms touch, and exhale, fold forward, gently bending the knees to bring the fingertips to the floor or to a block. Now let's walk out the forward fold, letting the upper body hang forward as we bend one knee at a time. Hips shift side to side, communicating with the backs of the legs, the outer hips, the low spine. 
And then from here, we're going to bring the knees together. If it feels okay for the knees, lift up onto the toes and bend the knees forward. Do that once. Do it twice. Hey, what the heck, let's do it a third time. We're, we're doing a trend of threes today. Okay, now we're gonna do a deep forward fold. Wrap your arms back behind your shins and tuck your fingers underneath your heels. If your heels are together, then your pinky fingers will be touching side by side. Thumbs wrap to the outsides of the heels, bend the knees deeply to, to, uh, to rest the torso on the thighs. And then begin to push down through the knuckles of the toes, lift into the kneecaps, push the outer hips skyward as you sandwich your belly to your thighs, your face towards your legs, the crown of your head towards the tops of your feet. Draw your shoulders up away from your ears so that the sides of the neck lengthen. Pull up with the hands on the heels. Sandwich in, open up, continue to breathe. Notice what you are feeling, where, are you, where you are feeling it. <sighs> Slowly untuck the fingers, walk the hands forward, inhale, palms to shins, half lift, and listen, exhale, now sit down into your imaginary chair. Fingertips behind the heels, thighs come parallel to the floor. If you have the ankles and knees together, squeeze them in. If you have the blocks, squeeze the blocks. If you don't have the blocks but your feet are apart, try to keep your knees pointing in the same direction as your toes. Now round your spine, chin to chest, forehead towards or to the knees, belly button in towards the spine, tailbone tucks, towards the heels, feel the space along the back of the body open up. So breathe between the vertebra along the back of your spine. And then slowly push your feet down, walk your hands forward, fold in deeply. Inhale, palms to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, fold even deeper, release the head, lift the hips. Inhale, rise all the way up. See, so circling the arms out, up and overhead as your palms come to touch, look up. Exhale, hands through heart center, arms to your sides, Tadasana. Inhale, look up, reach up. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, sit back down into that fierce chair, thighs parallel to the floor. Temporarily round the spine to tuck the tailbone and draw the waistline back. Now look forward and reach forward like you're holding a box. Heart reaches forward, fingertips reach forward, waistline pulls back. Keep the hips low, knees together, right hand to the right thigh. Then curl your arm and gaze up towards the ceiling, left arm, look up, and then draw the waistline even more dramatically back to hook the left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Make a fist with your right hand, push your right hand into your left, push your right fist into your left hand to revolve your left ribs strongly towards the right. Sink the hips lower, weight in the heels, ankles and knees squeeze in or squeeze the block or just try to keep your knees pointing forward. Broad across the collarbones, breathe like the sponge, inhale, saturate, exhale, cleanse. <laughs> Look down. Unwind, hands on either side of the feet, push the feet down, lift the hips up, release the head forward. Inhale, lift halfway, and exhale. We gotta do that second side. Sit in your fierce chair, thighs parallel to the floor. Round the spine temporarily, keep the hips low, look forward, reach forward, left hand to the left thigh. Curl the chest and gaze up, and then exaggeratedly draw the sides of the waistline back, Hook the right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Right knee pulls gently back. Make a fist with the left hand. Put it in the right palm. Use the pressure of the fist into the palm to revolve your right ribs towards the left. Sink the hips low. Weight in the heels. Ankles and knees hug in or into the block. Chest is broad. Gaze is up. Five, four, three, two, one. Unwind gently. Fold in. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale to rise. Exhale, Tadasana. 
Arms at your sides, shoulders roll back. Reorient here. Arrive with your breath. Consider your experience in this moment, in this pose. How is this pose different than the other, the previous times we practiced it today? How do you, what is the culminative, culminative energy or the resonant energy in your body at this moment? Okay, we're gonna do some balance. So, <laughs> so get your sense of humor on because uh, you can't take balance too seriously. Otherwise, uh, you'll throw the game board. Um, so left foot to the floor, step down into your left foot, keep your hips and chest squared forward, turn your right knee and toes out, place your right foot inside the left calf or the inside of the left thigh. I should have said you will throw the game board. You know, I'm just talking from my own experience. I'm, I, I don't know that I've thrown a game board, but I've wanted to. Uh, push your foot into your leg, leg into your foot, hands to heart center. Collarbones are broad, extension from the right inner groin out through the right inner knee, contraction from the right outer knee to the right outer hip. Root down through the left leg. So one uh, thing I was thinking about balance today is, <laughs> um, Grounding is good, but you can't, it can't be all grounding. Um, if it's always grounding, always this downward solidifying energy, uh, we're going to get rigid. So your tree not only has to be grounded and rooted, but it has to be supple as well. So uh, let's try today, if you'd like, take your arms up. And then remember that storm I uh, referred to earlier, that storm is blowing your branches. You gotta move with this, uh, this force, this, um, this wind. You gotta have that suppleness as well as the grounding. Whew. Maybe it's nighttime, close your eyes. How does a tree stand up at night? It's so much harder. Okay, uh, <laughs> take the arms down and we're going to change this tree into another tree. So uh, grab the right ankle, keep the right knee closed as much as possible, try to squeeze that knee shut, and then grab the outside of the foot with the left hand as you turn the right knee down towards the floor, coming to a half lotus leg. Right hand to the heart. If you can bring the left hand to the heart without the foot slipping, feel free to do so. It's just, oh, well, I can kind of do it. I always just elect not to do it, because um, it's harder. Uh, <laughs> and my, my butt pushes back. So I like to keep the tailbone long and the, the foot held. So um, you're your own tree. You do your tree. Find a place to focus your gaze. I, I like to um, look out a window at an actual tree uh, and think about what is it like to be that tree? Okay, one more thing. Extend the right leg forward, hands on the hips to keep the hips at an even height. Extend the right leg forward, lift the leg up, push through the heel, pull back through the toes. It's just the shadows, my feet really aren't that dirty. Five, four, three, two, one. Lower the foot back down. Okay, get your hula hoop, visible or invisible. Doesn't really matter, I've noticed it's about the same effect. We're gonna Hula hoop, counter pose, stiffness in the hips. Got to loosen that, loosen that stuff out. One direction and the other direction. I notice also that when I hula hoop, my upper body gets tight. So what do you do about that? Haven't figured that one out. Okay. Second side. Ground through the right foot. Turn the left knee, left toes out. Keep the hips and chest squared forward. Bring the left foot to the inside of the right leg at the calf or at the thigh. Once you have the foot placed, push the foot into the leg, leg into the foot so you have that stability at your middle line. It doesn't have to be like 
uh, the hardest you can push with your foot and your leg. It's just that stabilizing pressure to the middle line. And then from that middle line, expand out, broaden across your collarbones, broaden across the front of your pelvis, extend out through the left inner thigh, lengthen down through the tailbone as you lift through the heart, hands to heart center, and grow the branches of your tree. Root down, but stay supple. So get your branches moving. Do some, this is how I dance. <laughs> Do some dance moves. Is everybody else at home dancing uh, to videos on YouTube? Uh, I hope so, because it's, it's really fun. Um, okay, so do this, and then we'll switch into the half lotus tree pose. So keep your knee closed, keep that squeezing in, and then uh, bring your uh, left foot into your right hand, turn your left knee down, Lengthen through the tailbone, left hand to the heart, right hand to the heart if you're feeling it, if it uh, makes your pose better for you, then do it. If it, for me, it just doesn't make the pose better for me. Um, <laughs> so do, do your thing. Sometimes your thing is gonna be, I'm just gonna sit this round out. If it were a poker, you're like, I fold. I fold this round. I'm going to preserve myself so that I can continue into the game, into the future. Okay, uh, extend the left leg straight out in front of you. Lift the leg, lift the leg, lift the leg. Wrap the, wrap the outer hip down towards the floor. Push out through the heel, pull back through the toes, ground through the right leg. Five, four, three, two, one. Foot back to the floor. Okay. A little more hula hooping, counter it out, loosen up those hips, one direction, do it fast, do it slow, and other direction. Okay, one more thing, one more balance thing here. Let's do some eagle pose. Inhale, arms up, exhale, right arm underneath the left. Uh, palms touch or grab shoulders, elbows lift, forearms away from the face, sink down into your hips as though you're sitting in a bar stool. Right foot grounds, left leg lifts, point to your left toes or try to wrap your foot behind your ankle. If your foot is wrapped, like you'll notice, you can look at me, my knees are pointing out to the right, I'm going to draw my knees back towards center. As I draw my elbows up, forearms away from the face, hips sink low, upper body back. Five, four, three, two, one. Unwind, sweep the arms up, exhale, left arm underneath the right, grab palms or shoulders, elbows lift, forearms away from the face, sink your hips into your imaginary bar stool, left foot grounds, right leg lifts, either point the toes or wrap the foot behind the ankle. See again, if the foot is wrapped, knees tend to point out to the left side. So draw the knees back towards center, hips down, elbows up, forearms away from the face, upper body back, weight in the heel. Five, four, three, two, one. Unwind, sweep the arms up, exhale, release the arms down. If you are not standing at the top of your mat, stand at the top of your mat, top third of your mat. And then really relax the arms. We're going to swing the right leg forward and back. Swing it with uh, reckless abandon. <laughs> it's. And then we're going to do something really fun here. Grab the right leg and play it like a guitar. And then swing the right leg back into a lunge. So if you didn't really swing it back that far, that's okay. Just kind of slide the foot back until you're in an, uh, in an upright lunge. Hands on the hips, melt the hips down and forward so the left thigh is parallel to the floor. Lift through the right inner upper thigh, square the hips and chest forward, lengthen the tailbone down, arms at the sides. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. And exhale, oh, wait. <laughs> exhale, open the chest towards the left. Left, right, left leg forward, open left. Inhale, center. 
exhale, open left, inhale, center, exhale, open left. This time, either stay here with the arms at the height of the shoulders or attempt to swing your left arm behind to reach for the outside of the right thigh. Reach your left arm up by your left ear and just lean back. Lengthen from your uh, right hip through your right fingertips. Hug the left shoulder deeply onto the back of the chest. Lunge deeper into the left leg, weight in the heel. And then unwind, hands frame the front foot. Lower the right knee to the floor. Perhaps onto some padding in the form of a blanket or a doubled up mat like so. Okay. Hands come to the front thigh, scissor the legs in. So the left heel is pulling back, the right knee is drawing forward. Keep the hips squared, the legs toning in, and now begin to release the hips down and forth. So a, a contraction and extension simultaneously. Lower ribs in and back, tailbone lengthens down. Arms at the side, open the chest. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Biceps back behind the ears, curl back, look back or I'm going to interlace my hands behind my head. A little bit more supportive. That's what I'm feeling I need today. If you want more support, then have the head. If you don't want to do any kind of back bend, don't do it. Elbows out, shoulder blades on the back, heart lifts. No one to hold them, no one to fold them. No one to walk away, no one to run. Okay, come forward. Hands frame the front foot. I just had to continue on with the verse. <laughs> Squeeze the legs, hands to the front thigh, <laughs> waistline back, tailbone down, extend up through the right arm, and then draw the waistline even more exaggeratedly back, hook the elbows to the outside of the right thigh. Maybe it's here, maybe you slide the elbow down so that the armpit is closer to the thigh. Maybe you stay here, bring your palms to prayer, bring your thumbs to your sternum. Maybe you lift the back inner thigh, the back knee off of the floor, back leg straight. So you're into a prayer twist, lunge, do hickey. Okay, wherever you are, notice, be present, feel what you feel because your feelings are real. And that is a direct quote from Frozen 2. So I am going to take this opportunity to bring my right arm underneath my left thigh and do a little clasp here. Left shoulder blade on the back, chest gaze up towards the ceiling, stay deep in the lunge, and then get the heck out of there when you're done. Safely, send the hips back, runner stretch, left toes towards the ceiling. You might slide the heel a little forward as you send the hips back. You want the knee over the right, you want the hip over the right knee, Draw back with the left toes, draw back with the left hip, extend along the back of the left leg. And if you want more from this, walk the hands forward, round the spine, fold over the left leg. Nicole Beachill. Uh, I first did this in her class and I loved it. Okay. Grab the leg, play like a guitar, the guitar, and swing the left leg back. Oh yeah, come up and do a high lunge. So uh, get your lunge deep, right thigh parallel to the floor, knee over the heel, back inner thigh lifted, arms to the side, shoulders away from the ears, inhale, sweep up, exhale this time, open right. Inhale up, exhale right. Inhale up, last time, exhale right. Choose to stay here or attempt to wrap the right hand to the outside of the left thigh. Left arm along the left ear, reach up, curl back, sink deep. Weight of the heel, lift through the back inner thigh. Look up, curl back, shoulder blade on the back. Lengthen along the left side body, five, four, three, two, 
One, hands frame the front foot, sink the back knee to the floor. Anjane Asana, Mother of Hanuman Pose. Bend the back knee to the floor and pat it as necessary. Squeeze the legs together, scissoring the right heel back, left foot, lift the knee forward, hands to the front thigh, interlace your fingers, prop up your chest, side to the waistline back, and extend. Expand through the right knee, expand through the left knee, keeping the heel scissoring in. Expansion and contraction simultaneously. Arms at your side, shoulder blades on the back, inhale, sweep the arms up, biceps back, curl back, if you'd like, support the head in the hands. Interlace the fingers, cup the base of the skull with the thumbs, wide the elbows out, lift the heart up, look back, curl back, heart lifts up, head sinks, or heart sinks up, heart sinks up, heart lifts up, hips sink low. And then chest forward, arms forward, head forward, and then back off the depth of your lunge a little bit. Hands to the front thigh again. Lift your chest up. Left arm up, sides to the waistline back. Hook your left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Stay up here or slide the elbow deeper if you have the space to twist more. Hands to prayer, thumbs to sternum. Widen out through your elbows. Stay here and lift the back knee up. Look up, broaden the collarbones. Stay here, notice where you are. <laughs> if it's a good choice for you. Uh, left arm underneath the thigh, take the right hand, clasp, right shoulder on the back, turn the chest up. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm cueing off of my own energy and uh, I put a lot into this class, so, <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, if it's not what you wanna do, I'm not, I can't even see you. I support your decisions. I want you to stay on the mat. That's the main thing I want. But um, don't do it because I want you to. Okay, look down, knee down, hands down. Send the hips back. Slide the right heel forward, toes back. Knee over, hip over the knee. Lengthen along the back of your leg. Pull back through the toes. And if you want more, slide the hands forward. Round the spine. Fold over that front leg. As you arrive here, breathe. Communicate with the back of your right leg. Option to be curious. Option to enjoy. Option to allow yourself just to do this right now. And notice that just this, it can be very, very full experience. Okay, let's come forward or out of that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna consult my notes and my time here. Oh, whoa, okay. We gotta get straight to this darn thing that I promised, which was side crow. So um, we're gonna do this first, uh, lying on our backs. So uh, let's unceremoniously come down to lie on our backs. Knees are bent, feet on the floor, arms out to a T, palms face up. Lift your feet up off the floor, squeeze your legs together, and then tuck your tailbone up away from the floor. So that's using some core strength to get your lower back curled away from the floor. As you exhale next, bring your, right knee right, bring your knees towards your right tricep muscle, keeping your knees together. Shift your left shoulder back towards the mat. Inhale, back to center. Tuck the tailbone, exhale, knees lower towards the left tricep muscle. Right shoulder grounds, inhale back to center. And then this time, we're going to uh, exhale, tuck the tailbone, right, uh, right uh, knees towards the right tricep muscles. And then we're gonna curl the head, neck, and shoulders up away from the floor, and then try to push the hands onto the left side of the ceiling. So you're pushing hand prints to the left side of the ceiling as the knees shift right. Maybe try to land the outside of your left knee at the outside of your right arm, pulling the knees up towards the right armpit. Using the strength of the core to lift the head, neck, shoulders, lower spine, middle spine away from the floor, and then lower it down. So we're practicing, if you've done uh, pro pose with me before, I often introduce 
the regular straightforward crow the same way. So we're using this uh, crow pose, side crows on our back to really uh, exemplify how much core strength is required for this pose. And it's a deep twist. We've done some good twists today though. So I'm confident in uh, our approach to this. Tuck your tailbone, squeeze the legs, shift the knees towards the left, and then arms reach out to the right side of the ceiling at an angle. Palms push towards the ceiling as you curl your head, neck, and shoulders away from the floor. Try to bring your knees in towards your left armpit. Less of your back body on the floor as you push up, curl in, five, four, three, two, one, lower down. Okay, we gotta get straight to it. So curl, arms to the sky, curl up along your spine, come all the way up. And if you have, a, uh, if you have blocks, this will be an opportune time to gather them. You can use one block. I'll just demonstrate with one block because chances are uh, you're more likely to have one block than two blocks. Um, if you have two blocks, you also have one block. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm just cracking myself up over here. Feet on the block, the feet together, and if you want to do crow pose as an alternative to this, feel free to do crow, but I'm going to teach this side crow variation. So bend the knees forward, sit the hips to the heels, and then take the right hand back by the right hip. So reach back, maybe hand comes off the right side of your mat. Keep the hips low, extend the left arm along the left ear. Keep the hips low, draw the sides of the waistline back, rounding the low spine as you hook your left elbow to the outside of your right thigh. So just like our prayer, uh, our prayer twist lunge, we might slide the armpit closer to the thigh to the best of your ability. Keep your knees together and then plant your left palm on the floor, plant your right palm on the floor. I'm gonna give you this variation of the pose that makes it easier. So uh, traditionally, the uh, right arm is straight and bears no, uh, does not hold the hip, but I'm going to uh, advise you to make a shelf with your right elbow, look at your right elbow, and then start to lean your chest forward to bring your right hip onto your right elbow. And then come forward, squeeze the legs, shoulders away from the ears, collarbones broad, hands bearing the weight of the pose, and actually, when you do it that way, you don't even need all that much core strength. It's kind of just moving your body weight onto that shelf of your arms. Uh, so if you want to try it without the shelf, uh, it's a lot harder, but it's hard with the shelf, so give yourself a break. <laughs> I'm really all about giving ourselves a break today. Uh, it's just a, my mantra for the way, week. Um, sit your hips to your heels, squeeze the legs together, left arm back, right arm to the sky, side to the waistline back, hook the right elbow to the outside of the left thigh, and then hand to the floor, hand to the floor, look at your left elbow, if you're going to use the shelf technique, bend your left elbow, land your hip on your left elbow, shift your chest forward, forward, forward until your feet come on up, take any variations of this. That you, that you just are hankering to do. Um, and if you want more of that, you can pause the video. I don't know if you can pause it with live, but if, if it's pre-recorded, pause it, just keep going for that. There's a, a more in-depth uh, exploration of this on the um, 75 and 90 minute practices this week, the week. But I'm trying to keep it to 60 minutes. So let's, Relax on our backs for just a moment before we come up into a bridge pose. Because wouldn't bridge feel good right now? Feet parallel, heels in towards the hips. Push the feet down. Okay, a little stream has come underneath your hips. Uh-oh, it's really raining now. The river's getting bigger. You gotta lift your hips higher. Let's interlace the fingers behind the back. Chuck the shoulder blades deeply under the back of the chest. Look down the front of the body as your bridge grows. Push the feet forward, lengthen through the tailbone, wrap the inner thighs down. Soften the edges of the mouth. 
If you notice one side of your, if your bridge is lopsided, if one side is lower, then can you breathe into the lung of that corresponding lower side? Can you start to manipulate the pose internally? Slowly lower the hips down, untuck the shoulders, walk the feet as wide as the mat, let the knees fall together, hand to the heart, hand to the belly, return to your breath. Okay, I just have one more offering. Once it, you know, I just like to do at least two back bends. So uh, we can do, you can do a supported bridge by sliding a blanket underneath your hips. You can um, do bridge as we've done, or I'm going to give the option of a bound bridge. So bringing the heels in, if you can slide the hands underneath the heels, or if it's available, you can grab the outside edges of the ankles with either hand. Push the feet down, lift the hips up, tuck the shoulder blades, and make your bridge. Lower the hips. I just cannot stay within that 60 minute format. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, rapidly uh, slow down here. Oxymoron. Right? Um, take your arms out and windshield wiper the legs. Exhale, knees to the right. Inhale through center and exhale, knees to the left. One more visit to the left. Then draw the knees into the chest, up towards the armpits, grab the outside edges of the feet, and come into a happy baby, rocking side to side, pulling the knees down towards the floor, massaging the back body. And feet together, interlace the fingers around the outer edges of the feet, flatten the low back against the floor as you extend out through the inner thighs, out through the inner knees, contract through the outer hips. The pressure of the feet into the hands pulls the arms taut, lifts the heads, the arm bones away from the floor, broadens and opens the upper back. And finally, grab your, uh, squeeze your legs together and wrap your arms around the fronts of your legs. Roll into a ball, chin to chest, forehead towards the knees, squeeze. And then let it go. Take the time to put on any articles of clothing that you might have lying nearby. And when you are ready, as you are ready, either come to lie on your back for Savasana or in lieu of a um, inversion today, if you have a blanket or a sperm pillow to bring to a wall, you might set that at the base of the wall, set your hips on the padding, and then swing your legs up the wall for a um, mild inversion, which will also be um, a restorative posture. Either, in either pose, gently tuck your shoulder blades underneath your chest and turn your inner arms, palms of the hands open to the sky. So the other day when I was doing teaching this sequence, I was trying to come up with a way to compare Savasana to the ending of the game. So consider that this, this is the end of our practice. This is the end of this particular game we've played with our, played ourselves in. <laughs> um, and can you, you might consider this, this is the reward for the game played, the game well played.
practice itself could be viewed as rewarding. I certainly view it that way. But often I've had the experience of um, students telling me I feel better than when I showed up. <laughs> so um, consider that possibility. Allow this time to experience your body resting in this state, resting in the resonance of your effort. Resting in the resonance of your attempt to care for yourself. integral component in our desire to care for others. Feel free to stay in this shape. Or if you'd like, join me in slowly regaining movement to the fingers and toes. Gradually reawakening the body in whatever ways um, you'd like, you like to do that. Maybe the arms rock from side to side. Maybe the head rocks from side to side. Try reaching the arms overhead. Big stretch. Eventually bend your knees to the floor, or bend your feet to the floor. <laughs> bend your knees, bring your feet to the floor. Extend your right arm along your right ear as you roll onto your right side. Transitioning from our corpse pose into this fetal position. Keeping the eyes closed, move back into a comfortable seated position. Settle down through the legs and hips, grow tall along your spine. Bring your hands onto your heart. Reacquaint with your breath. We will chant Om one single time to close this evening's practice. Exhale to empty your lungs and inhale for all. Um. Thank you for your presence, your focus your hard work throughout today's practice. The light in me honors the light in each of you. Namaste. Thank you guys. Um, ah, just splash uh, candle wax all over the place. <laughs> uh, please reach out to me if you have not already. Um, yeah, if you are Jeffrey, Scotty, and Andrea, thank you for joining me. If you are not those people, thank you for joining me. Um, yeah, please, please, please let me know if there's something you're uh, yearning to uh, learn or begin practice on again. Um, 
on this 60 minute for, format that I'm trying out on um, Wednesday nights, I typically am not going to have time for inversions. So um, please practice those on your own or uh, do a pre recorded class of one of the uh, pre recording of one of the other classes. Um, yeah. I hope you're enjoying these offerings and um, I hope that I see your little numbers on my screen next week. <laughs> yeah, so get in touch, uh, Facebook, you know, the regular ways of getting in touch. There's also an email address on my website at uh, Brownstone Yoga, Adams Public uh, backslash Brownstone Yoga. So you can contact me there as well. Okay, I will see you all next week, Monday, 10 a.m., Tuesday, 10 a.m., Wednesday, 5.30 p.m.